Please be seated. I invite all of our children to come and join us, if they will, please. And I invite a few more adults to join John Lewis to help him up. <laughs> now somebody come help David up, please. <laughs> Good morning, Logan. You got it under control. There's, there's candy over in my desk. <laughs> you take him over there. <laughs> there, there, there. Hey, sweet thing. Good morning, everybody. That was a good, good morning. The rest of y'all get elves and good mornings. Let's try it again. Good morning, y'all. Thank you very much. It's so good to see you. Did you have a good Easter? Did the Easter bunny come? What did the Easter bunny bring you? What? What? Card games? Card games and candy? Have you eaten it? What did he bring you? Yeah. A stuffed bunny. What did he bring you? A pocket-sized microscope? That's pretty cool. Wow. I didn't know they made pocket-sized microscopes. You'll have to bring it and show it to Father Rick next week. Looks like a phaser. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> okay, so we've been learning a lot about what we do in worship, right? So we learned about what? One thing called bowing. Remember the bowing? Yeah, exactly. We learned about, what's this? Blessing yourself, making the sign of the cross. We learned about all the candles and what they mean and why we use them. And today I want us to learn about one more thing, but I have a question for you. What do we do most of the time that we're in church? Yes. Pray. That is exactly right. What's that red book? You know that red book that we use out there? What's the name of that red book? What is it? No, not the Bible. You got it almost right. One more. What's the name of that book? The Book of the Prayers. That's almost right. Anybody else? The book, yes. Book of Blessings, not quite. The Book of Common Prayer. So even the name of our worship book tells us that we're going to be doing lots of praying when we come to church. Now, do y'all pray? Do you? Who, who do you pray to? God. To God. At God and Jesus. Okay. Where are they? I have a surprise for you. Listen very carefully. God's not in heaven. Guess where God is? Right in you. Guess who you are? You're God's heaven you're God's heaven and God stays right with you all the time so when can you talk to God if God if you're God's heaven anytime every time can you talk to God while you're in school just not out loud right okay can you talk to God when you're playing soccer yes can you talk to God when you're playing hockey can you talk to God when you're walking home you can talk to God anytime because who is God's heaven? Point to who God's heaven is. Amen. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. All right, come on. Let me give you a sticker. We all a stamp. The stamp today, the stamp du jour is, it says joy, joy, joy. Hey, buddy. Come on. Y'all know that little song? I got the joy. Can you sing it? I got the joy, 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 joy. Sing with this congregation. Down in my heart. Sing, y'all. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy. Where? Down in my heart today. I got the peace that down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Uh-uh. Down in my heart. 
I got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Down in my heart today. Hey, y'all are good. Tom, I think we ought to have a singing here. One Sunday, just a singing. Just a singing. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Did I ask good? Yeah. Are you telling me I just volunteered for it? <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Am I loud enough? Can you hear me back in the back okay? Okay, good, good. Um, let's be quiet a little bit. Close your eyes if you want to. Breathe deeply if you want to. But let's invite God's Spirit to fill this room so full that we can taste it, we can breathe it, we can feel it. Come, Lord Jesus. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon us. That we might hear the words you have for us this day, that you might give me the words that you want said this day that we may find the strength to go forth into this world and to share with others the joy that is in our hearts. Resurrection. Amen. How are y'all doing? Woo, we had a couple busy weeks, didn't we? Holy Week was just fantastic here. I got to tell y'all, it is one of the best Holy Weeks that I've had in a long, long time. And a big part of it being Holy Week, and I'm not just trying to scratch you behind the ear, was that I really felt at home and with my family. And I saw so many of you day in and day out, service in and service out, that it was just wonderful to be with you and to be among people who were seeking and searching for the same things that I was seeking and searching for. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here and be a part of this community. As a lot of you know, I am um, in a two-year study with an organization called the Hayden Institute for Spiritual Direction. Uh, I went uh, to my first intensive this past March. One of the first things, the first thing that we had to do uh, for the Institute and send off to our, our mentors was to write our spiritual autobiography. Now, I know there are those of you here who've gone through uh, EFM and have written a spiritual autobiography. Who all has done that, written a spiritual autobiography? It's quite an experience, isn't it? Um, I don't know about you, but my experience of it was that I would sit down and write and words and experiences and parts of my life would come back to mind that I hadn't thought of in years. And the very process of getting it out of me and down on a piece of paper made it seem like it was more real. You know what I'm talking about? It's like there it is in the words, and I can read it and reread it, and uh, it, it has a different kind of life to it. I had a strange discovery uh, in doing that, and I discovered after I had completed this 10-page single-spaced thing, uh, that the theme of my life and the theme of my spiritual autobiography was alien. Alien. I was and am an alien. Different, odd, strange. <laughs> As if you didn't know that already. In my family lore, um, Two days after I was born and brought to my mother, it is told that my mother took me and she held me up and she looked at me and examined every possible part of me to make sure that I was perfect. Um, when I think about that now, it's kind of like, well, was I good enough? I mean, really, was I, was I good enough, Mom? It's kind of like the movie Alien, you know, Sigourney Weaver. 
Like, did I just sort of pop out and he wanted to make sure I was okay? <laughs> when I was a kid growing up, I was a pudgy little thing. Fatty, fatty, two by four, can't get through the bathroom door. I had to wear husky pants. It was always an embarrassment to go into the local uh, haberdashery to get my jeans because we'd have to go over here to the table that had the husky pants on them, you know? Odd. Different. Strange. An alien. I went off to college. I was much too young to go off to college. Um, I only turned 17 right after, I, after the first week of classes. Joined a fraternity a few months and just never felt like I fit in. Um, one thing in particular reminds me of, of, of that period of time. You know, there, there are basically two ways to cross your legs. There's the, the kind of girly way, like that, right? And then there's the macho way, baby. Right? I crossed my legs like that. And they made fun of me for doing that. Sissy. Even though I was an athlete. Sissy. Odd. You're different. You're different than I am. You ain't from around here, are you? Um, you ever had the experience where you've been with a group of people, maybe in a work group or something like that, and um, you've made your ideas known and what have you, and then a little while later, somebody stands up and says the exact thing that you said and it's like it's all brand new like you'd never said it before you ever had that experience I mean what am I just a piece of cabbage over here in a chair I have something to say odd strange you're not the same color as I am It occurs to me that one of the great driving forces in our lives is the desire to be accepted. I mean really accepted. One of my mentors, uh, Al Peso, taught me that two of the greatest um, driving forces in our lives is the search for place and belonging. Uh, I would guess that probably the majority of us are in this, pla in this wor place of worship today because we're seeking a place, a safe place, a secure place, a place where we're accepted and where we belong. When I was in graduate school, I discovered uh, Carl Jung and Carl Jung's um, typologies of personality, and at that point I began the journey of understanding why I am as I am. Anybody here familiar with the MBTI, Myers-Briggs Type Indicator? Um, my four letters are INFP. Less than 2% of the population is INFP. No wonder I felt odd. <laughs> and to be an introverted male in this American society is even more odd. And to be a sensitive introverted male is downright queer. <laughs> so Jesus died, Jesus came back. And his peeps were in a room with the door locked. 
for fear that the same thing would happen to them. And strangely and mysteriously, Jesus appears there. Peace be to you, breathes the Holy Spirit on them, takes off again. Thomas says, you guys are out of your mind. Unless I have some tangible evidence of this, I'm not going to believe it. Jesus comes back, appears to him again, along with Thomas. Thomas becomes a believer. We're going to go through 50 days of Easter in which we read about and hear about various post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. There are two ways for us to accommodate that, to appropriate that. We can either look at those biblical depictions as um, historical or quasi-historical stories about the risen immortality of the Lord, which is it's good. But if that's all we do, then that's all they're going to be is stories about something that happened a long time ago. The other way of appropriation and understanding and living into these uh, resurrection stories is to look at them and their deeper meaning, their metaphorical meaning. What does it mean to me? This odd guy who dresses up in white drag every Sunday morning. What does it mean to me? Thomas was odd, don't you think? Certainly odd in comparison to the rest of the disciples. I can just hear them now. You know, Thomas, you might want to look for another line of work, buddy, because you're not like us. You're odd. You're strange. You're different. What did Jesus do? He came back. He came back. I understand, Thomas. I know you're different, but I'm going to take you where you are and how you are. I'm just going to ask you to do one thing for me. When you're out there relating to all those other folks, I want you to accept them too, just as they are justice where they are. Wow. What a wonderful world this would be if we could do that. If we could just love one another as we are. That's the kingdom of God. A bunch of odd queers getting together and loving one another just as we are. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Let the church, let the church say amen.